Hey guys, good morning. Yvonne Blasquez here. <clears throat> I'm very excited to make this video. Now, I saw the entire video. This video is inspired by Dr. Rhonda Patrick. She did an um, interview with Dr. Uh, Cromer. Uh, hopefully I pronounced his name right. If not, I apologize. Uh, it was on autophagy, caloric restriction, memetics, fasting and protein acet acetylation. You can check out that whole video. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and link it at the end of this video because I want to get through kind of. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, her video kind of inspired this video. I was already kind of working on a video on autophagy uh, since it's really kind of a hot topic recently in, in regards to fasting and caloric restriction and so forth. Uh, but I'm also going to talk about a double-edged sword, which I talked about in my IGF-1 video here. Um, you know, typically it's been in the vegan community in general, IGF-1 is all bad. Yeah, it, it, it mainly is. We understand this, but there's a lot of elements to it where, one, we actually need it in our body. To, if, if we didn't make IGF-1, we would have problems. It's like anything, like like expressions in the body and hormones kind of like like we need them to a certain amount, like we need some fat to survive, right? We need some protein. So all of these things have caveats, and that's important to understand. It's about balance and balancing things in favor of them being more favorable versus adverse. And that's a key difference. And that and that is that comes from having a filter, an ability to, to decipher and disseminate information versus someone who just sees it at face value and just jumps a bandwagon without really, you know what I mean? Like that's why I'm here. That's why we're here. You need to consult experts to actually like really get to the bottom of things rather than just jump into conclusions, which, you know, again, do we want to have lower IGF-1 levels? Yes, yes. But do we want it to be really low? Not necessarily. And there's studies in the, in that video. I talk about there's like this 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 um, this um, in this relationship that uh, I think it's a U shape where the risk is actually higher with really low, low levels of IGF-1, and it's actually lowest when the the levels are lower or or kind of in the middle, but lower, and it increases as a, as as IGF-1 increases. So it's not just a linear relationship. It's a different, you see what I mean? So n not everything as is, as is clear cut as, as it's sometimes painted in the, in, the, in the media, okay? And this is a conservative, conservative position I'm taking, okay? I'm, I'm not all in on, 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 on one way or another oftentimes in this field because things change as we know. Now, all that said, let me just dive right into this autophagy discussion. So um, in her talk, she talks about, it, it, it's around 14 minutes, she talks about autophagy and white blood cells, how a prolonged fast or fasting has been shown to reduce white blood cell count. Um, that's actually a sign of your body. In a sense, it's almost like your body's inflammation levels are down because you, your body doesn't have to produce white blood cells to fight off you know, uh, invaders or insults right, to the body. So they tend to be lower. Um, Dr. Greger talks about this in his video, White Blood Cell Count. He has a whole series, so you can check that out minimal time for autophagy and uh, doctor uh, the her who she was interviewing dr. Cromer he did not really there was no real like I guess at this point the, the data isn't in on, on human trials or, or human studies but um, but I think that the way I see autophagy is it's not necessarily an all or nothing thing which again it's something that the general public tends to put things in like all eggs in one basket all or nothing I think autophagy is kind of a spectrum where it's kind of like um, you increase autophagy the longer you fast, but it doesn't mean that you're not having some sort of autophagic, um, you know, you, you're not having autophagic responses at, at a lower level of fasting. So like, let's say like you might be 25% autophagic just at a resting state or whatever, right? This is just a wild guess here. This is just kind of um, for 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 explaining. And then when you fast for, let's say, 12 hours or, or more, it jumps up to 30%, right? And when you get to 24, it's more like maybe 40%. And then when it's like 36, it's 50 and so forth. You see what I mean? I think it's a spectrum. Um, and, and, and we'll get into that on, on caloric restriction memetics. The big element here that was fascinating that I'm going to go ahead and touch on All right, you guys, so I got the whiteboard out. So the big thing I want to talk about that she really kind of hits on, and I think this is fascinating, and this ties into my whole systemic signaling 
um, aspect of anabolism versus catabolism, like we're kind of like in a, in a flux, like you can be more anabolic, more catabolic, or you can be kind of even keel, okay? So, um, and this ties into my whole, but like the, the, the research by Dr. Swartz about the body and its, its inherent bias towards weight gain and how um, that's why most people when they get older and typically, you know, the metabolism starts to decline as we get older, people want to stay leaner versus getting bigger. When we're younger, okay, and our metabolism is, 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 is you know, is the way it is higher t typically, right, when we're younger, um, is that, you know, younger people like we tend to like want to get bigger right because it's harder to get bigger right well that changes as we get older and so forth and everyone's different okay so this is just kind of general terms but if you look here okay this is kind of tying into this the whole anabolic catabolic systemic signaling stuff um in dr ronda patrick's video this interview at 19 minutes they are speaking of elevated essential amino acids okay or uh, lead to increased IGF-1 levels and increase mTOR, okay? mTOR is kind of like an anabolic pathway, and we talk about it in resistance training. There's a difference between mTOR from dietary stimulation and exercise stimulation and so forth, okay? Again, it's about balance, guys. Um, leads to a decrease in autophagy, okay? Now, what are some of the top sources of essential amino acids? Primarily animal-based protein, animal products. The, in, if you think of essential amino acids, we think, think of complete proteins, the nine essential amino acids, right? There are a few exceptions of plant foods that have um, all amino acids. I think, well, soy and quinoa and perhaps a few others. But primarily speaking, most of the foods that are richest in essential amino acids and most abundant are animal proteins. And so what is, and so what is animal proteins doing? You can have a, a fat-free chicken breast, fat-free uh, fat um, you know, fish and that kind of thing but you're getting a high dose of essential amino acids, essential amino acids, which increases IGF-1, which increases mTOR, decreases autophagy, okay? This is the anabolic overexpression that I'm talking about in, that, in the whey protein probe. Again, you're not gonna find many studies on whey protein uh, talking, speaking of it negatively because look, let's face it, there's a big dairy industry lobby, okay? In fact, the dairy industry, I think they have at least a dozen journals. I think one of them is called the Journal of Dairy Science. <laughs> You, yeah, they're going to be putting out studies. And then also some of the studies that show pe positive benefits of whey protein, I mean, don't even get me started on that. They're short-term studies. And then on top of that, a lot of times they'll have disclosure of like some funding from some whey protein supplement, you know, and all that kind of stuff. You talk about bias, come on. Anyway, the point is this. Autophagy is basically, autophagy is like, basically it's like, um, it, it has to do with, it's, it's, it's a catabolic function. It's like, it's like your, your, your cells are housekeeping. It's, it's known to be, generally speaking, a favorable response in the body. It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's connected to caloric restriction, obviously, which is a catabolic function. Again, all these things are connected, guys. And, and that's why I enjoy making these videos. And, um, you know, because I'm telling you, years from now, this video will still be relevant and it will still hold true um, in, in a big way. Now, if it doesn't, that's fine. But I'm following the evidence. I'm piecing things together, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm just kind of uh, using logical, logical knowledge to put all this together. But this ties into my whole anabolic versus catabolic state, and how I'm able to effectively problem solve with clients, help them lose weight, and so forth. And how oh, and then there's the double-edged sword of obesity. The, it's not actually the double-edged sword of autophagy. Um, the double-edged sword of autophagy, in fact, uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, they elegantly talk about it, how uh, cancer cells actually increase autophagy, which is kind of a um, kind of an oxymoron. It's kind of like counterintuitive, but that just goes to show that there is a double-edged sword with autophagy. Primarily, autophagy is a good function, okay? It's a good function. It's like your body's... Um, recycling of cells, it's like renewal and that kind of thing, like cellular renewal and so forth. Um, and there's different kinds of uh, autophagy. There's lipo li lipophagy, which um, that I saw in this study, I'm gonna, all the studies will be below in the video description. Uh, I quote from the study, it says, despite striking similarities in the regulation and function of autophagy and lipid metabolism, the two processes have only recently been shown to be interrelated, okay? Some studies show they're, they're kind of not, in which case, people who are obese have elevated autophagy, which doesn't make sense, right? Well, it's kind of like people who are obese also have higher levels of leptin, the satiety hormone, which doesn't make sense. 
They also have higher levels of insulin, which is you know obviously insulin resistance and so forth. Um, so obesity is paradoxical. My take is this: Why is autophagy elevated in obese people? Right? Isn't that kind of like a fat burning kind of like process? In a sense, it is because again, autophagy is catabolic, meaning it break things, it breaks things down. Lipophagy and lipid metabolism are very similar, but they're not exactly the same thing. Um, and again, you can see the studies below. But autophagy is increased in obesity because essentially the body is trying to fight against um, against the against the obese state. So in, in other words, the fats, the the lipid droplets, and the adipose cells are very enlarged in an obese individual, where the body is trying to increase autophagy or lipophagy for this instance to to reduce the size of those but guess what the obese person mainly probably lifestyle there could be some genetics involved but mainly lifestyle if you keep feeding right high fat foods and 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 high calorie foods i should say processed foods then you're fi you're basically preventing your body from achieving homeostasis your body's the body's trying to achieve homeostasis and obesity by elevating autophagy okay so there's a difference between uh, lean individuals and obese individuals and how we look at all this information in regard particularly in regards to autophagy in this video okay so in normal weight people and even people probably slightly overweight uh, and in lean people autophagy when we increase autophagy that's typically going to be a good situation because autophagy is going to be doing its job we're not um, autophagic we're not autophagy resistant okay that's kind of a new little coin that's a new, new little like term that I just created based on this information and this research I believe people who are obese are autophagy resistant and so we need to turn it around and get them into a catabolic. The bodies, their their body is trying to fight to get them in, in, in a catabolic state, but they're they're anabolic. They're overly anabolic. It, it's it's paradoxical. It's confusing. It's complex. But um, I feel highly confident, and I've made a playlist uh, on videos that uh, me talking about cracking the obesity code. I I really do believe that I have cracked it, and it's just a matter of time and working with people and perhaps some 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 upper level experts in my field come across this video and, and contact me because I'd love to kind of get involved and really making a difference here and some sort of research or or, or, or or you know or strategic programming whether it be through dietary and exercise interventions I mean I'm all about that so I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out guys because there's a lot of information and I could keep going but I mean this is fascinating stuff I highly recommend you watch this video by Dr. Rhonda Patrick okay Um, also, exercise in, uh, increases autophagy, which makes sense to me. Okay, it makes sense to me. Endurance exercise increases it. Again, catabolic, right? Fat burning. But so does resistance, resistance training. And a lot of people get confused by that. And those studies will be below. Resistance training breaks down tissue, right? You know how they say, like, you when you lift weights, you get, you know, it's like you're, you're breaking down your muscles. And then the recovery is when you're not lifting weights is the nutrition, right? Well, when you break down muscle isn't that isn't that breakdown cellular breakdown that's that's autophagy right there that that's autophagic isn't that pretty cool so um so yes exercise has autophagy benefits now so does fasted exercise okay obviously you're going to probably increase autophagy with fasted exercise but exercise in and of itself is in fact they've there have been studies that show that the benefits, particularly performance benefits and health benefits of exercise are connected with autophagy. So I think that's fascinating stuff. Now, she mentions that around 30 minutes that nutrient deprivation increases autophagy. Well, I'm kind of a, you know, a deep kind of a, a profound thinker in this and that macro or micro nutrients increase autophagy. I think it's macro and particularly protein. Again, protein is anabolic, thus it's going to kind of inhibit Autophagy, in fact, research has shown insulin inhibits autophagy, and they're both kind of the same thing. Insulin is the most anabolic hormone in the body, right? You see how this is all coming together? Right. Now, um, okay, so also, well, yeah, anyway, so macronutrient deprivation. So when they say nutrient deprivation, I believe it's macro because there have been certain antioxidants associated with increased autophagy, like resveratrol. So again, um, so the, 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 if you inhibit, if you reduce resveratrol, you're going to reduce autophagy. So I think it's caloric restriction, 
and um, and a nutrient dense diet is going to optimize autophagy as well as exercise. Um, and mitochondrial biogenesis and mitophagy, which is basically autophagy of mitochondria, have, have been connected, which kind of makes sense, exercise. Um, oh, and lastly, guys, um, hydroxycitrate uh, is, is, is known to boost autophagy. I talk about this in a video. It's a natural fat loss burner. Hydroxycut comes from hydroxycitric acid, which is basically hydroxycitrate that comes from Malabar tamarind. Why get the supplement when the food's out there? Um, lastly, guys, Oh, uh, coffee increases autophagy, and it does. And it could be decaf as well, which is really cool. So it's caffeine independent, which I found awesome. So check out her video, guys. It's an awesome video. I loved it. Dr. Rhonda Patrick is phenomenal. Um, really good video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave questions, comments below. Give this video a thumbs up uh, because I'm sure some of this information you've never heard before. So thank you for watching. Tune in next time.